and welcome to lesson three of my week or school. Today we're gonna do some different week ors, uh, but they will all track buffs. So we're gonna start with a simple one and then progress to something more advanced. But uh, let's get cracking. So start by opening up the week or menu with command slash wa as per usual, uh, and scroll up here. So, as always, we're gonna start by doing a new group. So, today we're gonna do a buff that tracks Manatee. And Manatee is a cooldown that allows um, the mana cost of our spells to be cut by half for 12 seconds. So, we want a, uh, an aura that shows when it's up so we know our window of opportunity to spam heal. Right, but... Uh, Let's call this Monarchy Group. And we're gonna do this by actually using a texture aura. So go back to new and actually progress texture is the one we want. So progress texture, call it Monarchy. Click on this little arrow and then on the group to pop it in. Right, so right now it's just a simple sun texture kind of thing and we want a different one. So in the display tab you can click on choose here to browse all the available textures that uh, we can supply. And we want, if you click on the menu up here, go down to runes. So let's choose one of these runes to use. And I th think I'm gonna use this one. And then click OK. Right, so right now you see it has this annoying black background we don't want. Uh, and the only way to get rid of that is to go to blend mode in display tab and change it to glow. Like so. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna Mix around a little bit with the colors here. Let's give it a bright blue foreground. And the background can be darker purple. And I want the alpha slider to be up at 100%. Like so. Uh, background offset is how much bigger or yeah, how much bigger the background is, and we want this set to zero, so. Background and foreground is the exact same size. And then as for orientation, we want this to be anti-clockwise, so we get this yeah, clock animation, so to speak. Right, so I think I'm satisfied with the size. Um, we can also click in smooth progress here if we want it to yeah, progress more smoothly. And then, right, so we're gonna go to trigger now. The default trigger is set to an aura, and as I've talked about in lesson one, auras means buffs and debuffs. So we're just gonna type in the name mana t here, like so. And it's set on player and a buff, that is correct. Show on buff and debuffed. That is exactly how we want it. Right, but uh, we also want a text that shows the exact duration of uh, the buff. So we're gonna go back to new. And this time we're gonna add a text aura. Let's call it empty. Cooldown, drag and pop it into the group. Right, so this is just gonna be uh, a countdown of how long we have left on our buff. So the trigger should be the same as our texture aura. We're just gonna type in mana t here. Uh, and now it tracks the duration of mana t. It should be set to uh, percentage p here and as you can read p stands for progress and that is our timer and that is exactly how we want it. So now it's just a bit of a cosmetic changes, uh, if you want decimals or not. I prefer to have it justified center and anchored 
center so the text is exactly in the middle. And we're gonna change the size a little bit. Like so. Maybe a different font. Okay, so now it's a functional week aura. I'm just going to do some minor touch-ups. For example, if we click on the texture aura and then could go to the tab animations, we can set a preset fade in and preset fade out on start animation and finish animation. So when it pops in, it fades in rather than just pops up out of nothing. And Lastly, if you click on the Mana T group, have that selected. Any changes we do now will affect all the children or us within the group. So click on the group and then go to load. Right, so this week aura is only pertinent for our monk class. So click on player class and then add monk. Talent spec is Mistweaver and talent selected should be Mana T. So unless we are on a monk in Mistweaver spec with the talent Manati, this ore is not going to pop up. <clears throat> or it's not going to load at all, which is exactly how we want it. Right, so let's, we can, um, we can also move it a little bit off screen, like so. Let's try it out, see how it works. Yeah. So that's uh, a really simple way to track uh, a buff. And you can do this in a million different ways. And I really recommend to experiment and, you know, do it exactly the way you want it to look like. But we're going to continue with a slightly more advanced buff tracking aura for now. Right, so I'm um, in the proving grounds right now, so I have easy access to an allied group because the next aura we're gonna do is one that tracks the duration of renewing mist on our group members. For mist weavers, this is particularly important since renewing mist count dictates how strong our vivify is. So, yeah, uh, we're gonna start with doing a new dynamic group and as I explained in lesson one a dynamic group sorts its children auras for us in a neat list so we're not gonna move around individual auras uh, which is exactly how we want it so dynamic group let's call it renewing mist and then go back to new so what what we want right now is a progress bar and you can name it whatever you like, but let's pop it in the group. Right. So this is going to track Renewing Mist on our group members. So let's go to Trigger. Right, so it's a buff, so we're still on Aura type kind of way. Uh, but on Unit here, instead of tracking it on our player, we're going to change it to Group. And or a name should be Renewing Mist, like so. Uh, and if you scroll down a bit, we want to show name info should be players affected, so we know which player has the Renewing Mist. And then we're gonna click on this, Show All Matches Auto Clone, which means if we have several Renewing Mists up, this will automatically spawn several of these progress bars. So click on that. Um, you can hide it when not in group if you want to. It's not particularly interesting if it's only on ourselves. Because this won't be able to track your renewing mists, mists unless it's on a group or a raid member. Right, and uh, one final thing. Click on own only here because otherwise you're gonna track uh, renewing mist of others other Mistweavers as well, and we're not really interested in that. So, okay, let's make this aura pretty. So on bar texture, you can choose whatever bar texture you have available. I have like a million I have imported and done myself. But let's go for something rather pale, so we can add a bit of color to it. 
I want this to be a green color. Right, so what we're gonna do right now is just make this a bit prettier. Uh, and you can do it however you like, but I like it this way. Let's see. Icon should be on the left side, I think. Uh, I want a spark as well. Green, Pale green spark, please. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll all the way down. Actually, we're gonna make this... Oops, a little bit bigger. Yeah, like 25 is good. And uh, I'm gonna have a border as well. So, on border style, there's something called one pixel that I'm really fond of. And now it looks like shit, but we're gonna fix it. So, border offset 1, border inset 1, border size 1. And then on border color, we want green, that is on full opacity. There's a little bit of overlap between the progress bars right now, but that's fine, we're gonna fix that. Right, so we have our border, we have our text. Right, so on text you can also do some touch-ups like change the font to whatever you like and then maybe add a font flag outline so it's a little bit easier to read uh, maybe change the size a little bit maybe yeah something like that <clears throat> and we have our spark our color is green background color and change the alpha up a bit Icon on left side and up here. I like smooth progress. Basically, it's just you know a smoother animation. Right. So it looks pretty good right now, but we're gonna add one little condition. So if you go to the conditions tab, I want my bar to be completely red when there's only a few seconds left on it. So we're gonna go add a condition. So condition one, if trigger one remaining duration is equal to or less than five seconds, then our bar color should be red add property change because not only the bar color should be red we want the spark color to be red and we want the border color to be red as well so as soon as this um, as soon as the duration goes below five seconds it's gonna turn completely red <coughs> right but we're not done yet so if you click on the group, when you have the group selected, you get this little tab that pops up. That is also called group. So here we can manage how the group is going to look like. And this is completely cosmetic. You do it exactly how you want it. But um, uh, we're going to have, I like it to have it downwards, aligned, centered. Yes, a little bit more space. Maybe a little bit of stagger. And you can also have animated collapse, expand and collapse, which means instead of just fading in and out, it sort of pops in like this. And if you want, you can change the group scale if you want it bigger or smaller, you know. You can also change the size directly on the bars. You can do it whichever way you prefer. Right, and sort, uh, I leave it at none. I don't really need to have it sorted in a particular way, but you can choose you can choose that yourself. Right, so I'm just gonna, as always, add on animations a little preset fade in and preset fade out. So that's better. Let's see if this works now, shall we? Uh, just 
so. Okay. Yeah, so that seems to be working. We can see the name of uh, who's affected. We can see the duration that it's left. <coughs> of course, you don't have to have it in the dead center of your screen. I can move it a little bit to the side. Here we can also see that it turns completely red once it goes below 5 seconds as well. Right, so that's one way to track buffs on a group. Yeah, maybe should put it there. And you can of course track any buff you like. Just remember, unit should be group. We should have auto clone on as long as it's in a dynamic group. And of course, own only is very important so you don't track others' buffs because that's not really interesting. And touch up is always on load. Remember, remember, player class and talent spec. Maybe even here you can put it if you want it to only show up in combat, for example. Not so interesting to look at when you're not in combat. I hope you learned something new today and I will see you next lesson.